your seal look. Checking it out. Haven't really been up in like six months. I'd say the seas aren't too big really, but they're very closely spaced together. So this is the spot um, this afternoon. I'm not really venturing outside the cockpit. on the dot and we are outy. I can't believe uh, we've been at Red Frog for so long and we're leaving. So we are making a 220 yep. mile trip. Gonna take anywhere between 30 and 36 hours. Should have light wind, maybe on the beam. Yeah, I might go a little bit at the end. Maybe a little forward. Bye bye. See all the masks at Red Frog. This 36 hour, 220 mile passage will be our longest in almost seven months. We've got the nervous jitters, excited to cruise our destination, the San Blas Islands, but also fully aware that there's no telling exactly how the sail will go for sure. The cruising ground we're headed for lies east of our current location, Bocas del Toro, Panama. We've been in this spot for two months and spent the last week preparing for San Blas, where we plan to stay for three months. That means a lot of provisioning, not the easiest task, and then plenty of time spent squirreling away our goods into every nook and cranny of our 36-foot sailboat. to the ocean here. It's gonna be really hard to get this on film. We're trying to film what the boat's doing right now, but we're basically hobby horsing. Like, the waves are very confused. But instead of being straight rows, we're doing weird things. Um, and so we're, we're pitching like this. Hopefully when we get out of this inlet, it'll just calm down a little bit. Like really, yeah, a little choppy. So I can view seas like they're not in, well, they're not in rows, you know. No. That's why the Congo is so bad here. Hopefully, it evens out when we get out of here. So 
one of our neighbors in the marina uh, who runs Red Fraud Bungalows gave me one of my favorite lures. I haven't been able to find these in Panama. This is a cedar plug, simple, cheap, but I find them really effective. So I'm gonna kiss it for good luck, send it overboard. later we're still inside of land um, but I'm getting sleepy <laughs> we were just talking about um, the fact that I might knock off soon um, which is a good thing because you know ideally it's like so it's 5 15 ideally if I could fall asleep soon I'm in sleep for the next like six hours or whatever then whenever Bill wants to sleep we can switch, basically. Tonight should be pretty easy. Um, it's tomorrow night that we'll have to pay more attention uh, now with the canal. Did you see how it look? Check it out. Hasn't really been up in like six months. I'm tired too. Yeah, a little bit. Bill is a man of few words right now. Um, there's some some nerves. Um, it's so weird, like, I'm gonna try to make this concise, which is not my forte, but it's like, we've sailed so much, um, and in some ways I think it's made us more confident, but in a lot of ways it kind of just has made us more, not more fearful, more aware of what can go wrong. But more aware of what can go wrong. That combined with not having sailed for a while, we're kind of just like, yeah, you get used to just expecting anything. You know what I mean? Yep. I just, I just don't trust anything right now, so I'm kind of just like on, I'm on high alert. This is sort of the form of the sea trial. So yeah. I'm not like in that relaxed passage mode yet. I'm kind of just inspecting a little bit. Is that a good thing though? Like, I mean, it probably leads to less trouble. Will we ever be relaxed on passage again? I think so. I, <laughs> I know. I think we will too. It's How is that concise, honey? It's not concise. <laughs> I did five minutes of the camera. <laughs> Oh, How's your line? Nothing yet. Am I gonna wake up to sounds of? For sure. out to sea. It's, um, it's been a long time. So last time I moved the boat on any sort of distance was uh, actually a sail from Mexico to Panama. So that was way back in June and it's now January. Um, it's definitely a little nerve-wracking being back at it after a while, but I feel like I'm settling back into the passage and, you know, it's getting used to being uh, underway again and moving and sort of watch schedule. But uh, yeah, it's good to be back. Basically, kind of slept on and off until like 1 a.m. Um, Bill got me up, and uh, he's sleeping now. And it's been a pretty easy watch so far. Um, we are doing seven knots right now, so we're making great speed. Um, the motion's still really weird. These waves are just really not evenly spaced out, though nothing like it was um, when we left. So I'll take you outside since I should check the horizon now anyway. I 
thought maybe you'd be able to see me um, outside because it's such a bright evening. It's, I don't know if it's like a full moon, it's close to a full moon. So that's really nice because we will create visibility. And yeah, I'm going to be back to reading my book and just chilling out, which feels really good after a busy week. It's pretty cozy right now at sea. It's quiet and peaceful because we're sailing and yeah, that bright full moon just gives you so much comfort. So if I had a night camera, I'd show it to you. But yeah, it feels very peaceful. It's about six in the morning, just pop the reef in the main. Um, it's funny, the new wind instrument is kind of hard to know when the reef, because we definitely were running a little slow. Like we had a reef at like 13 or 14. And it's just gone up to 16 now, so <laughs> it's definitely a different, a bit of a calibration. Well, the sun is just peeking up over the horizon now. 6.30 a.m. And we're on like eight knots. And we're pretty upwind. So we're healing. And I know you can't see me. Because <laughs> it's still too dark. But I'm here on watch. Um, Bill, we kind of switched on and off. It's always hard the first night. Sea state today. Um, we're going pretty hard upwind and pounding in some seas. White yield over, going upwind about 20 knots of wind. We knew it'd be an upwind, bumpy ride, but to what extent exactly was unknown? For two reasons. One, because winds blow consistently and fairly constantly east northeast, the sea state takes time to subside even when winds have shifted more north. Two, a strong favorable current flows southeast here, pushing us off course, requiring compensation by pointing the bow more northerly, a more upwind angle. About 100 more miles ago, so we've gone about halfway. It's kind of interesting, we're approaching the Panama Canal entrance with all the ships. It's kind of cool. Someday, going through there, you get to the Pacific. Uh, maybe you can see here is the traffic separation schemes for it, and a whole bunch of anchor ships. Pretty cool. Can't wait to get in that Pacific Ocean and explore a new, a new one. We've been in Atlantic for six years now. Crazy. I'm in the um, self-medicating phase of this. 40 upwind passage. I'm too lazy to and ill to deal with meals, so I'm having pretzels so that I can take Advil because I have a pretty bad headache. And I'm also gonna pop uh, one of these caffeine pills because that could be part of the reason why I have a headache. I'm also self-medicating. I made myself an instant coffee, but Grace doesn't seem to have that in her right now. No, I just, I have this, I'm like pretty nauseous. The smell of like, especially like instant coffee. I actually Even have, like a, good I have a good association with it for some reason. It reminds me of like passages. Like I have like happy memories of like this taste. This is probably, it's usually like it's kinda like the most exciting point of the day is coffee time on passage for me. But um I only slept like three hours last night, so I definitely need this. I don't want to go to bed while we're crossing uh, this. This is the Panama Canal entrance. You can see all those ships. A lot of them look like they're anchored, but um, we're crossing over a few traffic separation zones here, so I just gotta be aware. Once we're past that, we should be able to turn a corner, hopefully, and maybe it'll be a little more easy to shoot a little bit. 
We haven't gone upwind in a while. It's not that much fun. How's this trip going for you? <laughs> I like going upwind. I don't know if you can tell how far healed. This is a level grid. <laughs> I think maybe our sails are getting a little bit old or something. Our jib maybe, because I feel like we're healing a lot more than we usually would for this much wind. So might have to get a new jib at some point. Poor main, who knows. I remember when we first got the boat. Um, <clears throat> I feel like we used to heal like this and we were upwind. And then we got new sails like a couple years in. It made a huge difference. So now we've had these sails. For how long? We got the jib in 2012. 2012. We got the main in 2014. That's a long time ago. Yeah. So just We've done a lot of sailing. Yeah, that's... Ugh. You notice it a lot more when you're going upwind, because especially when you're in like waves like this that are really confused, because the boat doesn't bite and like kind of like... It doesn't feel as much like you're on a rail. So I'd say the seas aren't too big really, but they're very closely spaced together. Um, you can see there's one, so it's like one, two, three, we're going down the next one, one, two, three. And I think that's something to do with the uh, current that is running through this area. Yeah, it's just like they're just kind of square. It's like chop, it's not really waves, or swell rather. But the water is turning a beautiful shade of blue again. So I'm excited to get some crystal clear waters. And near Bocas del Toro is more of a green hue. This is more like that Caribbean blue that you would see like in the you know Eastern Caribbean. So that'll be fun. Look at all these ships I'm trying to avoid this guy right here. It's like crossing a busy highway or something. This one's gonna come within half a mile of us, so I'll keep my eye out. I don't think it's that close for this zone, but he technically goes right away because we're in the traffic separation zone, so let's keep my eye out. the spot um, this afternoon. I'm not really venturing outside the cockpit, so I'm just kinda just watching from here. Um, it's just, it's very upwind. We're pretty, how much are we healed, would you say? I guess probably only like 15 degrees, but it just feels like a lot. So far, things are going really well. Um, passage can just be very boring, and that's kind of just what's just what's happening right now. Is there's some tankers that came by a little while ago, but there's just ooh, nothing going on right now. So we're just holding on. Bill's down below. Just looking at the map. Yeah. So we have left to go. We have um, 71. Okay. It's now two o'clock, so. So we've gone over 100. It was 220, right? So my brain's not working that well, but I think it's like 150 miles. You only had three hours of sleep. Yeah. Right? You had 150 miles in. Less than 24 hours. Yeah. That's pretty good. Way less than 24 hours, right? Yeah. Well, like 18. Neither of us are in math mode right now, <laughs> but we've made good speed, basically. That's the bottom line.
sunset once again. We just round the corner of Puerto Bello. Um, actually really pretty here. Pretty dramatic looking landscape. We have like 40 miles up to go, so just kind of sailing slowly. We're reefed down even though it's only uh, 12 knots of wind. Hopefully make it there around sunrise. Um, the motion has come down significantly, which is nice. Yeah, so hopefully it's just another peaceful night at sea. And uh, get some rest tonight, hopefully, so we can be functional tomorrow. The worst is if you come in and you have to sleep for like all morning, so hopefully I get some sleep tonight and do like a normal day tomorrow. tonight so that is fantastic. We all just went down to try to get some rest and right before that we tried to slow the boat down to get more jib. Just have been going really slow, followed all these charts. We, Bill couldn't explain it better than me. And Bill also set up the depth sounder in a cup of water thing in the head. So basically we're anchored, not really in a spot that's like described per se as an anchorage. Anyway, so it's four in the morning right now. Um, yeah, we don't want to anchor too close to the other boats because it's just too dark to do it safely. Um, and this is going to give us good enough protection uh, where we're anchored to sleep for the night and then we'll deal with it tomorrow. Um, yeah, Bill said I was sleeping uh, the last three hours and he said it was like a really pleasant sail in in the moonlight. Um, palm trees. Good job, Fern. Good job. You made it. It's 5.30 in the morning. I know. Time for a beer. 530. 530 or 4.30? Oh, 4.30. That's not too bad, actually. No. Big one. I think I'll be really cool waking up tomorrow morning. I know. Somewhere I'm new. so excited. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> Any feel post-passage? So tired. <laughs> yeah, that was a late one coming in at 5 in the morning, huh? Yeah. How good does the air smell right now, though? It smells so good. Go stick your head out, see what you think. Okay. Okay, I'll stick my head out. Post-passage thoughts. thoughts. So I would say feelings. <laughs> the MVP of uh, coming in at 5 a.m. into this challenging navigation area would be the Bauhaus charts, which is the main guidebook here in Panama. But I was able to find the charts electronically, and I'm able to use this program, OpenCPN, which uh, networks with our instruments and provides like GPS, wind, and all that stuff. And I was able to get it overlaid on a screen here. So you could see there's our boat, and this is all the Bauhaus charts. So they basically did a massive survey of the whole area, better than the international organizations that make charts, and it's like the best chart data you have around here. So you can see our boats here, and all the depths and meters. So it was very, the red guy. So it was very easy to kind of follow the channels in and anchor over here last night, and now we moved over here. Yeah, because I was, the, it's so clear, these charts, and then we could see you know, our boat moving. Yeah, like follow the vein. last night. You can see AIS, like other boats, and so it gives the wind, data, depth, all that stuff. So it's pretty, pretty handy. My post passage thoughts and feelings are I'm still really woozy, I think, from the patch. Like, I feel, I, don't, I guess, like remnant nausea. <laughs> um, Maybe so, you're land sick. It was yeah. quite choppy out there. We were really. I'm not used to being on anchor either, but um, 
it's beautiful here. We might not stay though. We might move the boat a few miles um, south of here, south of here to another island uh, where it's supposed to be a little calmer, and maybe we'll have self service. Um, but yeah, it's noon now. We just ate our first real meal. We made eggs. Um, We're just happy to be back at the group. If you know yeah. anything about us, we like buddy boats, so <laughs> yeah. we might have just sailed overnight 220 miles, but we'll still move again just to yeah. be packed. In, in fact, the next thing Bill's going to do is put the dinghy in the water. Like so we can say hi to everybody. Well, I so. mean, one interesting thing is we were trying to slow the boat down um, when it was blowing 20 upwind, and going five knots is so much more comfortable than going like six and a half. Like the yeah. boat is capable of doing a lot more. Like. I think one takeaway for me from this trip, we haven't gone upwind in a while, is um, maybe slowing the boat down in heavy weather, just for to sure. make, just to ease the motion. Yeah, because you kind of, like, what I'm feeling right now is, like, that I was, like, putting a giant Coke bottle and just shook up, and, like, you know how, like, the fizz, like, dissipates over time? Like, I'm on that tail end, but, yeah, when we were going upwind, going, like, seven knots, you're just... It, I, I feel like rattled. I mean, you were fine. But yeah, but I just, I just think of all the rigs starts rigging and the boat and everything. Like, because the, the boat starts launching itself off of waves at that speed, yeah. and then we pound into them a little bit harder. Yeah. Whereas I think, you know, going five, we kind of float up and then gently go down. Yeah. So, so we just, we forgot one major MPP. <laughs> the depth sounder and a wine glass for the win. Yeah. You can so see we have depth data on the chart plotter. That which, was so helpful coming in late last night. Which is really reassuring that the charts. <laughs> and I feel I tried filming it in the dark, yeah. but we'll show you guys. So he like the cord gets hooked up into the network. The network and then this is the situation. Yeah. And don't mind the gross stuff in the sun. Uh yeah, so that there are more transducer for the win. That little guy right there. So again to the folks who suggested that. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> Next is going to be somehow mounting a little, a little bit more permanently with a toilet bowl wax ring, because someone else left a comment doing that. I just got to find the right place in the hall where I can mount it. Yeah. That's too shallow. We can't close the floor of the head. So I got to find a place where it shoots through, but we could like mount it. Yeah. 